Hello everybody, welcome back to the lab. I'm just going to do a quick video because I haven't done a video for a while and I'm getting a bit, I haven't done a video for a while. It's not going to be a fix it video because I've got nothing to fix. What I thought I'd do, I'd just run you over some uh, updates I made to my 3D printers. I've got three 3D printers, I've got Tiro Tornado, I've got Red Rap Atom X, and I've got Ye old Faithful Anet A8. So I'm just going to spin over a couple of mods I made to these two. So first up, the Atom X. The Atom X is a 3D printed 3D printer. Did a video on it before. I haven't done a lot to this one since. What I have done, put a safety shut-off system on it. That's uh, I did a video on that as well. And um, I put a Beal Touch on it. Uh, I've put a hot bed on it. I put a smoke sensor here. That's an MQ2 smoke sensor just zip tied on there. In keeping with the rip-rap nature of the thing, and a smoke sensor here. And that's just above these uh, rather dodgy, well they're not dodgy but rather I don't like them green power connectors so the idea there is if any smoke here or any smoke here bearing in mind the fan's going to blow it that way it'll kick off the smoke detector and I did a video on this, I'll link it, this is a prototype that I've just used on this particular machine but if it detects smoke it'll send a signal to this um, transmitter which will shut off the socket oh, oh damn yeah, it's just knocked all that over, which will shut off the socket. Uh, similarly, I've put an additional thermistor on the bed. And I've put an additional thermistor on the hot end that you can just see going in there. So it's got two thermistors on here, and in addition to the original ones, and two smoke sensors. That is the Rip Rap Bat Max. These are the mods I've made to the TiVo Tornado. So the TiVo Tornado has got mains powered heated bed. The absolute first thing you've got to do if you've got one of these machines is put strain relief on the bed here so it's clipped there and some sort of strain relief here, I'll link these in the description, I printed them out of TPU and they're basically tapered and they stop you getting a, a too much of an acute angle on this uh, moving moving because uh, that's 240 volts, you don't want that fatiguing like I am breathing heavy at the moment, you don't want that fatiguing as it's moving back and forward so that's what that's doing, I've also Pulled this off and puts individual individually sleeved the live and the neutral. As this comes out of the factory, there's no earth on it, so I've also put an earth there, an earth there, an earth under there. I did a video on it. I'll link it that the moaning video, and that all goes back to the box here, and it goes onto the earth of the power supply, and then the earth, the power supply is earth to all of the points where it touches the case. Um, so that's the first thing you got to do. Second uh, safety thing I did was the Octopi with the temperature fail safe and the smart plug plugins. Octopi here run on a Raspberry Pi 3B, I think it's a 3B. It's got a C270 uh, Logitech cam, permanently wired in. Reason for this, this is running Octopi all the time and it's mon monitoring the bed temp, hot end temp. If either of those go out of bounds, it will shut off a smart plug. This is the printer coming in here, it goes through a smart plug, ground fault interrupt device as well. And it goes through a foot, it goes through this as well. Come on to that in a minute. So, if the temperature on that goes out of bounds, temperature on that goes out of bounds, it shuts off power to the printer. Yeah, the third thing I did was the ground fault interrupt device. And what that does is basically it knows what power is going into the machine and what should be coming out. And if there's a significant difference, it will cut power because it could be that it's going through you to earth. Anything going to earth that shouldn't be going to earth, it cuts power. Ground fault interrupt device worth having on, especially on a machine. It's got a mains powered heated bed and isn't earthed out the factory. So that's uh, number three, I think. Next, uh, safety related thing I did to it Fire Angel smoke alarm, five quid from Wix. Found which pin goes high when it's uh, triggered by blowing fake juice into it. And I've just got a little Arduino Nano here and a step down regulator. And similar thing to the uh, Atom X when it detects smoke, pin goes high. Takes 9 volts and sends it as a uh, 433 megahertz signal through this uh, transmitter and that shuts off this one. So basically, temperature misbehaves, cut this one. Ground or shenanigans on the ground, cut this one. Smoke, cut this one. That's the printer going in there. Any of those thing, three things happen, cut the power. I'll list the code to that in the description with a little Janet and John schematic if you want to copy it. Next thing I did with this was print this out because I'm guppy memory and I didn't know which way these go to make the bed go up and down. Very very useful. These wheels are printed as well and they just make it easier to level the bed. But since I got this glass on it which takes the whip out of any curvature on the bed, 
blue tape, 3M uh, 2090 tape, BL touch, genuine BL touch with a mount of Thingiverse, and the firmware update that just does a 5x5 grid, bilinear, so it level it that way and that way. Next thing I did was a spool holder. This is a spool holder here. I'll link it on Thingiverse. I think I found it on Thingiverse. Next thing I did was the wire brace. The wire brace is here. It just bolts here with a V slot um, bolt. Bolts into the back of the motor because this gives a lot of flex. Uh, and that just gives it a lot more um, rigidity on the backwards and forwards. Because this, this bed weighs a lot, especially if you put glass on it. It's got to move backwards and forwards at quite a rate. And it's got a lot of inertia and momentum behind it. So that helps. I then went and solid that all up by putting motor dampeners on. Um, what these are, these are uh, basically two plates with rubber in between. They go between the motor and the frame and the idea is they stop the frame from resonating with the motor um, noise. But the trade-off is that you only get two screws on the motor and two screws on the frame and you can't do the brace with them because you defeat the whole object. If you put that in you know, bolt that solid to there, then really what you're doing, putting rubber on that end. So what I did, printed a TPU washer here, or a TPU flange here, and TPU washers here, just to uh, take the uh, worst of it out. This cube was a test with those dampeners on. It is 20 by 20 perfect. If there's any banding at all, it's on the Z. So, you know, they do work. That seems fine. I also printed this little... Uh, thing out for the extruder to stop the uh, filament getting mashed in the gears. Next thing I did was open the box up and rewire the entire thing with proper UK 3 core flex on the 240 volt connections. Crimped all the connections, put ferrules or loops or eyes on all the connections and I'll open the box up and show you in a minute me changing the solid state relay for a probably totally over the top, over spec solid state relay. The reason I did all of that and the octopi was because this bed is mains powered, that's, that's the bed there, that's the silicon heat mat, 550 watts. It's mains powered. If either the MOSFET in here or the solid state relay fail short circuit, there's no way for the, the computer in here to shut them off. So the reason for the Octopi is if it goes out of temperature it will eventually shut it off. And the reason for the improved solid state relay is that it shouldn't fail because it's a better solid state relay. So I should probably say here that if you don't know what you're doing, don't mess around with this because this is 240 volts or 110 volts, depending where you are. The other thing I'll say to you is, if you haven't done any mods on this, you're crying out loud, if you are going to open it up like this, unplug it from the wall. Don't just switch it off here because it's switched on the neutral and this will all still be live. So, you know, I've done that bit now. Take the plug out if you're going to mess around in here. Uh, you can see I've rewired all of the sort of the high voltage stuff with proper free core flex which is much better than it was and colour coded it. I've also put a 3 amp fuse on the uh, bed, uh, oh, sorry, on the hot end so that if the hot end shorts out it will blow that rather than the board. I changed the power supply for a mean world power supply, I'll link that in the description. That's probably the biggest um, that's probably the biggest thing you can do or the, the the thing to make the biggest difference that you can do. It was fused on the neutral, it's not anymore. It was switched on the neutral, it's not anymore. It wasn't earthed, it is now. Um, I'll just quickly show you there. That's the FTDI chip that I grafted onto the board. Before that, I couldn't get Octopi to run. The BL touch is just going uh, up to here. And that's how that's wired. This is the solid state relay that comes with it. It's probably okay. So it's rated for 40 amps, I believe that when I see it. And I replace it with this. This is a 25 amp Croydon uh, Sensata solid state relay. How this works is a solid state relay, which is basically a relay that doesn't have any moving parts. And what it's got, it's got DC input on that back side there, which, be, which polarity does matter, so that's uh, positive and negative. And then when it gets that signal, it will close this side. So whatever's coming across these two terminals, it will close here. So this side's the hot side, if you like, the, the main side. This side's going to be the, the uh, DC side, less dangerous side. This side polarity matters. This side it doesn't. 
because you're just switching the live wire it's like a light switch okay so there it is in uh, better wiring better relay tighten all these up while I'm here keep these out of the way of the power supply this is less noisy but still it'll get garbled stuff on the screen if these get noise on them or bad connections um, so I put that back together so all back together and looking a bit dusty but one thing I didn't mention which I should have done is if you're gonna open the box up just check with continuity from the earth pin of your plug I check the continuity from here when it's plugged not plugged in but when you've got this plugged into the here not into the wall so you've got continuity to all of these screws on the case okay it should beep okay, so hopefully you found that helpful mods for the TiVo Tornado I'll link all this stuff in the description all this stuff in the description all the parts in the description I'll leave you with a couple of time lapse of some prints hope you're well see you all later thanks for watching take care